Density is a measure of mass or weight divided by volume. In most cases, density is provided as grams per centimeter squared. Water is the most commonly used comparison since one cubic centimeter or millimeter of water weighs one gram. Different polymer types will have different densities. Additionally, high degrees of packing and crystallinity will result in having increased density. Adversely, parts with lower density often have decreased crystallinity, lower packing, or may have voids present in the part. When determining the density of a part, first, weigh the part. Second, determine the volume of the part. This is usually done by water displacement. You should have an accurate fluid measurement device such as a beaker. Keep in mind you may need a larger beaker if the parts need to be rotated to remove any of the bubbles. Lastly, divide the weight of the part by the volume of the part. As mentioned earlier, density measurements can be used to determine the degree of crystallinity within a part. These numbers are examples of the density variations you may encounter. D sub A refers to the polymer density with virtually no crystallinity, while D sub C refers to the same grade of polymer which is allowed to cool very slowly and develop a high degree of crystallinity. As you can see, crystallinity can increase the density of the part by as much as 15%. Density tests are rare, but are very important to understand the morphology of the polymer once it is molded. As a rule of thumb, a density of less than one will float if you put it in water. Anything under one will sink. Excuse me, anything over one will sink. Anything under one will float. Also, if you overpack a part, you could be giving away a lot of money. As we just spoke about, you could be packing that part an additional 15%. So if we take an average of 5% and you're running a part that weighs almost two pounds and the material costs $10, you can quickly do the math at how much money that you're giving away. Heat distortion tests measure the deflection of a sample of specific length width and thickness tested under controlled conditions in an oil bath. Although the controlled conditions of a standard heat distortion test may not be relevant to your application, the physical performance of your part under heat conditions can be very important data. Even though your part may never find itself in an oil bath, it might be subjected to heat. In such cases, an oven can be very helpful. If your part can be found in dry, arid conditions, using the dry air from a desk and dryer system can be a great way to heat the part up for such a test. Ultimately, what we are suggesting is that you test your part in a manner realistic to its application under heated conditions. This will give you a great relative measure of how the part will perform in the field. For example, let's suppose you mold a paper tray typically found in an office environment. Then the product will often be placed next to a heat generating office equipment such as a copy machine, computer, or a computer monitor. You can simulate a loading of flexible paper through the use of silicone sheet cut to the size of 8.5 by 11. This is the standard size paper in North America. In any event, when heated, you can measure the, the deflection of the sample after a period of time or measure the time required for the sample to reach a certain amount of deflection. Again, your test can be used to measure a time deflection, a measured deflection, a sensor, a go or no go. You may see that none of these tests we're discussing are that difficult. 
They're all intended to give you a better understanding of your part or a basis of comparison for a future test. Viscosity is a measure of how a polymer's resistance or what a polymer's resistance to flow happens to be. Here you'll see a small animation of a capillary rheometer similar to that of a melt flow indexer. Such instruments force polymer through an orifice either at a constant rate or under a constant load. A melt indexer measures the weight of the polymer that's forced through an orifice under a fixed load during a period of 10 minutes. Unless you work in a laboratory, few of you will actually need the viscosity data for uh, your polymer. In most cases, relative viscosity can be pretty easy to obtain or be obtained with an existing machine and you can compare viscosities using different times or using different conditions. The relative viscosity you're concerned with can be calculated by multiplying the peak plastic pressure at transfer times the fill stage fill time or I should say the first stage fill time. If your injection molding machine does not provide pressure at transfer, you can always use the peak first stage pressure. In either case, you should convert the hydraulic pressure to plastic pressure if it's not provided. This will ensure that the measurements you receive from one machine are useful when compared with that to another machine. I've mentioned this in some of my past presentations, but the need for a scale in the production environment is critical to quality control and process documentation. Every molded part should be weighed after the first stage fill is determined, after packing time and pressure is established, as well as after hold is complete. This is also known as final part weight. Weight can also be a great way to taste, test multi-cavity molds. To test the filling and balance of a mold, first mold a short shot. Second, weigh the parts from one mold cavity to another, but don't include the runners or gates. Lastly, calculate the percentage of imbalance.